Now, switching gears a bit, in all of our efforts to pick up on communication patterns, have we perhaps overlooked whether communication strategies coincide across industries? Or do they differ dramatically? Well, to help us do a deeper dive, we thought we'd engage two very special guests from two very distinct backgrounds in a fireside chat. So I ask that you please join me in welcoming sports marketing professional, Charu Sharma, and the co-founder and CEO of Agilio Labs, Sanjay Tripathi. Huge round of applause for them both, please. I know you've got a time constraint, so <laughs> I'll keep in mind. So let's start, like, uh, let's start with the recent incident of Hardik Pandya and Rahul. Poor guys, they went for a chat show, and uh, you can say Karan Johar asked them some innocent questions and they answered and then you know what happened post that and this is not the first one the many happened and many will happen later so to start with you are actually managing a kabaddi league you know where you are a lot of young players who have never seen fame they come there you know overnight they become a celebrity in the tv because all the villages people know them so what are the what are what are your do's and don'ts for those sports professionals to manage media or manage communication Good morning, Sanjay, uh, and I appreciate the, your concern for my time because, uh, unfortunately, we, you know, uh, what can I say? I'm in trouble uh, because I was supposed to leave at 10:45. I haven't even started at 10:45, so I might have to very abruptly get up and leave uh, when it is uh, no longer any kind of buffer moment. But Sanjay, may I take just 30 seconds before all of that sure. to um, thank uh, Prabhu uh, for a wonderful start to this whole thing? I agree with you entirely, for whatever it's worth, uh, and also. Um, for whatever it's worth, I was such a big news consumer. This has nothing to do with what you asked me, and I beg your pardon, but just a few seconds. Uh, such a big news consumer in the past, and now I can't last more than 15 seconds, a channel. And I say, what is going on? It breaks my heart, because <sighs> the partisanship is just killing. It's a killer field. Anyway, um, uh, also a big thank you to Anushree, wherever you are. Thank you very much for inviting me. I had a little more than three days' notice, so I do beg your pardon, but uh, only a little more. Thank you, Anushree. And Sanjay, of course, wonderful that you're here. Um, you know, in light of whatever you said, uh, Prabhu, maybe we shouldn't even touch sport because it's such an esoteric kind of, you know, not only, not even secondary, a tertiary component of, of, of nation building, as it were. But, you know, if you'll allow me to be a little partisan here, uh, it does have its own saliency. It's a... Uh, visible and therefore it becomes important and uh, before we get to Hardik one last point uh, perhaps it can resonate with everybody here uh, just to sort of give sport a little starting kick here uh, as we get into a short conversation um, how important is the is the world of sport uh, in terms of uh, global recognition reputation and standing of a nation uh, I have a standard example. If you've ever heard me in the past, then I beg your pardon. But if not, then here we are. Uh, uh, and we'll do a show of hands because it's meant to be interactive as well. How many people here know uh, there's this country in, in, in the western part of the world uh, which is pretty vibrant. I mean, it has a decent economy. It's doing pretty well. It's a small island nation. But um, uh, show of hands, please, for those who know the finance minister, the, one of the most important people who runs the country, nation building, this, that, and the other, you know, the purse strings are in his hand. The finance minister of Jamaica, from that side, let's go, another three seconds. Finance minister of Jamaica. Okay. How many people know a Jamaican who is the fastest runner in the world? Some names? Yeah? A name? Okay. I rest my case. All right, Sanjay. Uh, so that's the role sport plays in. I mean, I'm saying if Usain Bolt is from Jamaica, it doesn't mean Jamaica becomes the number one country in the world for all sorts of other parameters. But people just know and they appreciate. They say, oh, Jamaica, yeah, Jamaica. So if an Indian is doing well in the world of sport, people say, oh, yeah, you know, it grabs world attention. And of course, the rest is all communication and maybe PR, but we'll get to that. Sanjay, uh, you say that. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, but um, Johar asked a few innocent questions, and Hardik, they weren't innocent questions, they were very leading questions. And poor Hardik Pandya, uh, KL Rahul, I must say, uh, was a little more uh, constrained because he only smiled or, you know, <laughs> sort of laughed in, uh, uh, in appreciation of what Hardik was saying. But Hardik walked right into it because, uh, and we rolled that back to why. Yeah. 
On one hand, of course, we're all individuals. We are unique. Nobody's like anybody else. So why should we be like sheep? Why should we, we be like, what's the word here? Clones. Yeah. yeah? We're not. Everybody is unique. But just like any sporting skill, or any skill at all, writing, anything, can be taught. And so, cricketing skills in this case are taught. Hardik Pandya didn't wake up one morning and, and he found himself 24 years old and playing fantastic cricket. He was taught from a young age. So where we lack is just informing people, if not teaching, uh, informing uh, continuously in a sustained manner, other requirements of once you reach a potentially high standard in the world of sport, how else are you supposed to conduct yourself? That training is very perfunctory at this point of time. I mean, I, it's not about me, was actually called, about, uh, called to the uh, National Cricket Academy a few years ago for, I think, a session a year for the under-19s, just to sort of make them understand a little more about what it takes to be, to understand that you're a role model, or potentially, and how you possibly need to behave to ensure that you only take yourself, your team, and the country forward. But such training is uh, very uh, little, few and far between. And so people turn out to be very good at their profession, but not in all-round development sense. And that, of course, as we can see in Hardik's case, was dangerous. Because you see examples around the world and you feel, hey, an American can say this and get away with it, or an Australian can say that and get away with it, or a Russian can do this and get away with it, but you've got to understand your own country. As you said, very important to know who we are as a sort of a, a base level. And from then up, you have to understand how much can you extend, what can you say, where can you say, to whom can you say, when can you say. So all those are, uh, are also learned. You didn't just grow up with it. You learn, all right, this is, I'm, this is what I'm supposed to say, or this is how I'm supposed to say it, and these are my uh, finite lines, a certain set of Lakshman Rekhas, which are difficult to cross if you know you're in a public forum. So I always ask, is there any media here? But of course there is, uh, because otherwise I can't be as brutally honest as I am at, at times. So in Hardik's case, it's just a question of not being told enough times what is a limit, is, is a word. Is there any other word for it? Publicly accepted behavior. Public, uh, thank you. Public, P-A-B. Publicly acceptable behavior. But that also is depending on which public, when, where, how. So on television, you say something like that, it's likely to stay there for a very long time. It's not going to go away. And he, I don't think, had a complete understanding of the fact that he can make a few flippant comments, which he would among friends, and that's perfectly acceptable among friends, maybe not on uh, a forum which is, loosely speaking, national media, even though, as you said, maybe 85, no, maybe 95% of the people didn't really see that at all, or would never will, but in it catches the eye. Yeah, I think uh, you made a very good point, you know, they're role models, but unfortunately, when the growing up years, like, you know, they come from poor background, like Himadas, like, and they focus on excellence. They had very little education. When they come there, you know, suddenly they're thrown into limelight. So, who, like Rahul Dravid recently talked about soft skill training, uh, training them life after sports because only less than one percent of the top sportsmen really will make it big in their life. So, where this training should begin? At, the, at their home, the initial coaches or the boards when they take over the. Like, you know, when they're playing with different teams, the teams should take care of that. See, currently the system is missing. So if you have to propose a system to make that happen, how will you go about it? Well, that's an easy one, of course. Home is always there, yeah. right? The home teaches you many things when you're growing up as a child. So therefore, parents and the rest of the family situation will teach you a fair amount about how to behave in front of home. But do kids listen to parents? Maybe not. So it gets a little difficult there. But they do pick up skills. Where do they pick up skills? In some academy, in some school, in some wherever else. You don't just, like I said, wake up one day, you know, being a top-notch sports person. So that is where these all-round uh, character-building yeah. skills needs uh, to happen. And just to give you another loose example, well, quick example, you mentioned the Pro Kabaddi League. I'm very, very proud of that, by the way, because it was a nation-building attempt in uh, getting our own unique individual, uh, not individual, unique heritage sport uh, out into the sunshine. So we, it started on the 26th of July. 2014, and I knew that would be the day that would change Kabaddi forever. But there was at least two, two and a half years of work before that to train at least the top Kabaddi players, because you only had access to them in the national camps and what have you, say about the top 35, 40 at times. Train them to the point of their uh, frustration, saying this, Charu Sharma comes and he keeps talking about aise bolna padega, or aise karna padega, or aise karna padega. When the league starts, then people will come to you. And, and they were like, you know, what's he talking about? And when it started, and the media, thankfully, came and expressed interest, they all came back. Uh, again, it's not about me, it's about them. And they said, well, thank you, sir. 
क्योंकि अब हमें समझ में आया आप क्या कह रहे थे एंड इन द मेन दे आर वर आर आई होप वेल कंटिन्यू टू बी वेरी वेल बिहेव एंड आई थिंक लार्ज सेक्शन ऑफ मीडिया वॉज वेरी प्लेजेंट ई सरप्राइज नॉट दे वर नॉट दे वर एक्सट्रीमली आर्टिकुलेट बट दे वर प्रॉपर देन यू वॉट टू से हम मच टू से एंड होम टू से सम ऑफ दम हैव लिटल कैरेक्टर सम ऑफ दम लिटल फ्लैटर बट नार दम सेट समथिंग विच इज आउट ऑफ लाइन सो इट कैन बी टॉट so i'll coming back to social media if you have seen like lot of sports person use social media to get a lot of fans follow them you know when you score a century or score a goal you know people really love it but when it goes other way around you know in the sense you miss a goal miss a penalty or miss a hitting a six or winning run it actually the trolls come and really pounce on you you must have seen what happens to dhoni recently or like sanya mirza you know and there are multiple examples so how you think a celebrity can really handle social media how much is good and where they need to control and uh, if there is a backlash how they would need to go about it it's like almost like a crisis communication what we say in a communication field so do they know enough of it if not what is your views on that okay first of course honesty is the best policy and i have to be brutally honest i uh, i'm not a big social media fan i apologize i'm just not into it doesn't sort of resonate with me so i'm not on it uh, and i am also sort of uh, technically or technologically little illiterate so i'm not the best person to answer all of this why am i so or continue to be so because yeah some people find it very useful i don't and uh, one of the many reasons perhaps subconsciously that i don't is because of when you say educate sports persons to maybe say or do the right thing uh, what about the millions uh, or or large number of uh, so called trolls or whatever else i don't think they've been to educated either in how to you know uh, communicate on the social media so that's not my forte i'm not going to go into it i think if you are going to enter the lines den or lair you need to be aware that it could strike you can't be lying down with lions all over the place and say ha bhai are that fellow bit me here so i mean social media is wild and if you are happy to play that game then go on a safari or unprotected because that's how it is uh, it, it, what's the rule here like i said i'm not into it i don't know i don't really I shouldn't say care and i don't care and uh, uh, if if you want to play that game and have 16.7 trillion followers and 89 million likes and whatever the hell then you've got to also accept the flip side so i mean if you're 7 foot 6 tall you say wow no the tallest guy in the world then you got to keep banging your head against some door or the other so you got to accept both sides of it and if you can't don't get into it so if you don't know what you're dealing with what's the point entering in is it's like you know uh, in various sports say, say a volleyball player comes and says well you know i played volleyball all my life i'm the indian captain and i played for india for 11 years and uh, and look at me i'm like i've got you know barely a job i got no money look at that guy played cricket for 2 years and he's a billionaire or millionaire whatever but I'm, i turn around to him and say listen did you not know you were playing volleyball so understand where you who you are and and where you're entering and what your game is and what your scope is and if you don't then somebody needs to let you know because we can't have these wild expectations that i'll be on social media i'm going to be the most liked person everything i say is going to be the word of god no things can bite you and you got to understand that how do you deal with it uh, it can lead to a lot of frustration disappointment depression and maybe it'll give rise to a whole lot of psychiatrists in the country i don't know good suggestion if you don't know how to handle social media don't get into it uh, coming back to my next question they're almost like a brand uh, because if you look at many of the uh, stars or like you know sports stars who manage themselves well they really get lot of dividend post retirement also like rahul dravid speaks today in multiple forums you know uh, to in, like a double digit figures the people pay for to listen to him for him for one hour but he managed that creating that perception for a very long time he has not changed his brand sachin has done it so many sports person has done it over the years and if you look at virat started in a wrong way but you know he has moved now his brand is very very strong so how they will go about creating their own brand because again you know like any brand which we all as a professional trying to build it's over a period of time so how will treat a, how will you teach us as a sports person to create their own brand so that which can last over a long period of time and taken them through the ups and downs of their life well for starters you need a very smart management company because you know one person can't know everything unlike and i shouldn't say this but i'm sorry but unlike people who run television channels know everything about everything anyway so i say what do you call any guest who's supposed to be an expert because you know if you're going to say shut up you because i know everything sorry about that um but so if you have a smart management setup 
then I think they help you choose, they also educate you what is right, what is perhaps not acceptable. And of course, there's a, a natural instinct among sports persons anyway about what they should be doing or what they shouldn't be doing, but a lot of training there is also necessary. For instance, let me quickly quote, um, say, a Gopi Chan, who says, I'm not going to promote colas or sodas or whatever because I don't think they're good for health. So that was, uh, you might say, you know, a damaging call to his brand, but I think he was honest uh, with himself and what he believed are, are good values. And he said, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm not going to do. A lot of these um, uh, uh, sports persons also help co-create products, which is not such a bad idea, because then you feel that you have a little more uh, of a say in what's going on. Rather than just promote a biscuit, you're saying, listen, uh, it's got more healthy things in it, and I've worked with the company, and I've kind of put more ingredients there, which I'd like to be ingesting as well. So there's a certain amount of concern that one can show brands uh, that one is endorsing. Uh, but if you go back to the individual being the brand, yes, there's a visibility involved, and that visibility is equal to commercial uh, potential. Uh, and remember, sports persons' lives, unlike most of us here, are, uh, in terms of at the top of their careers, very short. Some very short, some a little longer. And it's unfair to not expect them to try and maximize that. But the only thing is, at times, people don't uh, pay enough heed to what are they aligning themselves with. And that's when they get into trouble. For instance, Dhoni, very famously, with somebody who is getting into trouble in Delhi now. So let's not take names. And you just feel, yeah, well, I mean, they're offering you so much money, and I, I'm the big brand I am, so I should take it. But a little more research, a little more responsibility, a little more managerial advice, and just a shade less commercial concern will ensure that all these big brands, and by the way, the big role models, not just in India, but around the world, wherever they go, are somewhat protected from the backlash should things go a little wrong with a certain product or a certain corporation. Uh, there's this uh, movement, I think, legally, where now the brand endorsers are also equally or in some manner responsible, which needs to be looked at seriously, because, I mean, I don't think you can expect, say, a Dhoni or a Shrikant or whoever in, in, in any, any field or a Sena to go deeply into the books of every company. Maybe the management of that person can, but how deeply? I mean, do you get a, a major financial company, a big four person, to actually go into a company and say, well, how are they doing and how are they likely to do 18 years from now or eight years from now and I still may be promoting them and, and if they are likely to tank them? It's very difficult. So uh, the legal luminaries of our country need to realize that, you know, there's a very, very, very limited liability and maybe that's how the contract should be drawn up anyway. Very limited liability. I'm doing this for you in a short-term thing without really knowing in depth what your company is all about. Now, that doesn't sound like a cop-out that I don't really care about you, but it does, you need protection. There's no doubt about that, because to also get an endorser, a brand, equally responsible for the fortunes of a company, well, you may say that because of your face, more sold. But I don't really know the in-depth. I mean, maybe 95% of the people who work in that company also don't know how the ins and outs of that company work. Uh, so some protection there. I don't know if I've not answered your question. I beg no, your no. pardon. No, no, and no. also, uh, you know, the bell's not ringing, but in my mind, the bell's ringing really hard right now. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. so uh, coming back to the audience, for many of them are communication professional. They are the independent agency who manage the sports persons. I'm coming, and this question is from them. What do you expect them to do when they actually work with the sports person? Because many of your previous things, uh, that agency need to really train them, educate them. You know, they should look at the commercial interest, but not overtly commercial, get into depth of the thing, but you know, they like, you know, what, how they can protect them through the contracts. So what you'll advise the communication professional when they're dealing with celebrity, looking both short-term and long-term implication of their career? Yeah, you know, all the, there are no easy answers, but the first word that jumps to my mind is honesty. Uh, and not just here, uh, generally in life, and I don't mean to be preachy here, but it can take you a really long way. If one is completely, and I use the term very often, brutally honest with oneself, it's possible to go less wrong, because then you're saying, hey, listen, this is what I truly, honestly, deeply feel, and I'm gonna go along with that. Not what goes against my grain, or swing against the tide, or if I don't really believe in it, but my management is saying so, uh, I should do it anyway, or if the money's good, I should do it anyway. So I think honesty is a very big thing in the world of corporate communications and PR. I really feel for everybody here, if you're corporate communications and PR professionals, because it is a really, really tough job. And the number of people who uh, are, are switching companies wildly in the world of PR pains me because, you know, the, the expectation is ridiculous that if you're a corporate uh, communications stroke PR person, you own the media. You don't. 
So, you know, it's like getting, what's, it, what's the phrase, water out of stone. I mean, it's, you know, you're going to people, inviting them and hoping that there'll be a little bit of, in our old-fashioned world, we used to call it coverage. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't come enough or you get a full page and the company says, what? Only a full page? What about three pages? It's just, it's completely thankless. And I feel deeply for all of you, please be tough. Because, you know, otherwise there's so much distress and frustration. And these days, of course, a lot of the youngsters can't seem to handle it as well as we, some people used to in the earlier generations. Maybe we're just less intelligent, I beg your pardon. But you guys are all very sharp, and you feel it a lot more. And then there's this level of depression, which is not good. But it's a very, very tough job. Honesty, 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 honesty. With yourself, with the person you're dealing with, with everybody around you. Easier said than done, but please, it's not that difficult either. Thank you. Last question. Like, if there are three persons, if you think they have done the communication well as a sports person, in hindsight, what is the top of mind answer? Names? Yeah. On one end of the spectrum, I said, is there media here? Oh, of course there is. So maybe I should just shut up. Well, on one end of the spectrum, there's somebody as safe as a house, solid, like Sachin Tendulkar, who will think 15 times all the words in his mouth, and will make you wait, a bit like some other political leaders, and then say, Okay, you've asked me what is my favorite hotel, but uh, I've been to many hotels, and some of them are nice, some of them are not so nice, but ultimately I want to score runs and win for the country. <laughs> so it's like, so, you know, it says nothing at all, but very, very, very safe. Never gone to any trouble, barring a couple of cars and this, that, and the other. No trouble. Which is a pretty safe thing to follow, and, you know, you never get into trouble. Uh, just because of his... Achievements, of course, he was a huge and will continue to be a huge brand. And then there are others who, you know, uh, think that, uh, especially these days, you know, people are slick and smart and you can get away with saying anything, which is really dangerous because there's a backlash. I think um, Sonny Gavaskar has largely conducted himself with uh, a, 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 a good balance. Well, he said a few things that might be loosely considered controversial, but largely he's been rock solid. I think in his own... And of course, I, if you ask me for more examples, I'll need much more time and I don't have it. And yeah. The bell's ringing furiously. Uh, yeah. But I, I think in his own uh, less sophisticated way, couples manage very well. Okay. Yeah? I mean, he's leveraged his, hey, listen, I'm, a, I'm like you. I'm one of the people. And I'll say what my heart says. And that works. Because largely, he said stuff which resonates with people. People who's people. But with a larger section of society. So here are two names. There could be others, but um, I mean, at no stage have Indian sportspersons been trained enough in the concept of communication. And here, my final words, you know, we communicate how? Usually through language. It's my favorite lecture, and you're lucky that I don't have the time now for more. Unless we consciously work on improving our language, and language is like an ocean, and there's many, many oceans, many parts of language, then we are likely to come or get aground very quickly. We're likely to get stuck. And in our country, if we speak any language, I mean, if it's Marathi or if it's Gujarati or if it's you know, Assamese or anything, any language, can we try and make a conscious effort in this group here to improve our understanding of the language we wish to express ourselves in? Because what is very dangerous, things like misunderstandings. Why are they misunderstandings? Because we don't know how to express ourselves. The key word here is accurately. I've used honestly enough today, so I'll say honestly, but also accurately. And because we don't know enough about the language we wish to speak in, we become inaccurate. And that leads to all sorts of misunderstandings, which leads to all sorts of, I'm not saying wars today, which leads to skirmish. And uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, sorry, um, uh, who am I to give any advice to anyone? But language, 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 language. If you can say the same thing 20 times, or 20 different ways, sorry, then maybe you know a little bit of a language. So that's just one last word. Thank you, Charu. Thank you for your insight on honesty, language, understanding, what you communicate. And as a professional, you should know what to maximize and how to position them for a long-term proposition. Thank you so much, Charu. Thank you, E.T., for calling us. Sanjay, and thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Sanjay, thank you very much. And as a... Parting, a parting, parting sentence. You know, I'm dying, Prabhu, to listen to five minutes of news and enjoying it. Sorry.